you very much. Thank you very much, Bruce. When you speak of my father, I'm honored. It reminds me that I'm a product of where I come from. And when I look out in this audience and I hear the stories of all of you who have been struggling your whole lives to see your family be free from the shackles of the Iranian mullahs, I think to myself, we all come with our own stories today. And when I walk in this hotel, the Waldorf Astoria, I see pictures of my uncle, President Kennedy, on a lot of the walls here. And I'm humbled to call him my uncle. I'm humbled because his contribution to this country and to the world was speaking truth to power. He was the first president of the United States to address the moral outrage of segregation here in our country. And in a nationally televised address, he said, who amongst us would be willing to trade the color of their skin and be content with the counsels of patience and delay. He was calling on the conscience of white Americans who did not think that the cause of African Americans was also their cause. By saying, walk in the shoes of your fellow Americans who because of their skin color is darker than yours, are not treated with the same human dignity that you would expect to be treated with as an American citizen. That, my friends, is speaking truth to power. And today, although the headline here talks about Ashraf and Iranians, this is really a story of human rights. This is a story not just of Ashraf. It's a story about all of us. Because how many of us who don't have family in Ashraf would be willing, as my uncle said, to have their sisters and brothers in Ashraf today? How many of us, how many of us would be willing to tolerate United States policy which does not treat human beings with dignity and respect? This goes against what America stands for at its core. So today, you will hear a lot of people talk about delisting. They'll talk about Iraq as a proxy to Iran's mullahs. They'll talk about State Department policy. You know, Ambassador Freed, you know, Ambassador Kobler. They'll talk about, you know, all of these global political issues. But I want everyone to understand what this ultimately comes down to. It ultimately comes down to an issue of human rights. Because you can call it whatever you want. But when in this day and age, in 2012, you can have a president of a country, of Iran, today, say that he wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, 